gynecologist Dr. Almarie Bassan joins us on the show to discuss the importance of menstrual health and why all parents should educate their child on it before the time. Dr. Almarie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Pelisa. Now, Doctor, I don't think that we can discuss menstruation before first understanding puberty. So what is puberty and what happens to the body? So basically, puberty is the transition period from being like child to adult. And it takes a couple of years for that to take place. Um, and it all starts with the brain. You know, there's lots of hormones in the brain and then your brain starts producing hormones. And then those hormones start... Um, working on your ovaries or if you're a boy on your testicles and then the ovaries produce more hormones and then we get changes in our bodies because of that. So in the girls, you know, they get um, start with breast development, they get um, the pubic hair, the underarm hair, mm. um, the face can happen with the pimples and then, you know, um, obviously menstruation. Now, please may you explain what exactly menstruation is and how mothers can prepare their daughters for it. Menstruation is that monthly bleed that girls, women get. Um, I always say to the patients, you know, it's almost like if you picture a little bird's nest. So it's the body that's making a little nest. And if there's not an egg that's going to sit in the nest, then you get rid of the nest. So it's basically losing the lining of the womb um, every month. So the body prepares for a pregnancy. If nothing happens, it's got to start all over again. And I think if you actually explain that to little girls, um, to say to them that it's actually something so natural and only females can do it, um, then you take sort of the negative out of it. For our young ladies sitting and watching the show from their living rooms, what is normal in terms of blood loss, pain and duration? Okay, well, so normal for us, we say, is anything from two to seven days. But it's also important, you know, that when you start your periods for the first time, that you're not necessarily going to have a period every month and it is okay to occasionally skip um, a period. So two to seven days, um, and it should happen roughly every 21 to every 35 days. Mm. Um, and also the amount, you know, we think every month you bleed yourself to death, but basically if you, the average amount of blood loss is about 60 mils. So wow. it's not even half a cup. It's much less than that. You know, it's a quarter cup. So some people just have a little bit of spotting, but unfortunately some people really, really suffer and have terrible periods where they, um, with this flooding, they soil themselves and um, it just becomes, they just feel miserable. Mm. Um, but, you know, initially your body, it needs to find its own rhythm. So I just tell the patients, just hang tight, you know, it is going to get better. Um, and if not, then there's always help. We can always help. Yeah. Easing it a bit for the patient, yeah. I love that you highlighted the fact that everyone is different and everyone's body reacts differently to their menstrual cycle. Now, when should our young ladies and all ladies, in fact, seek help? Basically, if your periods are extremely painful, I'm talking about the pain where you literally cannot climb out of bed in the morning. They cannot function. You know, mom send the kids to school because they feel like, you know what, come get over yourself. It's just a period. And then, you know, this, the, the teacher would finally say, please come and collect your child. This child is in agony. So if the, if the periods become debilitating in terms of pain, mm. if they bleed so much that they bleed through their clothes, if they swill themselves, if they... I have to change the sanitary wear every like 15, 20 minutes, you know. Um, they can't go to school like that because, you know, no teacher will allow them to go to the bathroom that often. Um, and some people actually faint with their periods because of pain. And if you see that your child gets really tired, like lethargic, they almost become what we call anemic. Um, that's a sign that they really lose a significant amount of blood. Um, and I think, you know, if you have an open relationship with your child and your daughter, then you should also, you know, be able to gauge, you know, is she bleeding a moderate amount? Is this really excessive? Um, and you as the parent then need to, to do the responsible thing and bring it to a gynecologist or to the GP at least, if you can. What are some of the potential problems caused by menstruation and how can we go about treating them? The ones that we can treat is like if you are like anemic, um, which means you've got low iron because you've lost a lot of blood, um, then we can just maybe supplement your diet with extra iron and maybe give you sort of iron in a tablet form. Um, and that's 
easy to rectify. The problem comes in if you've got something like endometriosis. And endometriosis is really characterized by severe pain and it gets progressively worse. So every period is almost like worse than the previous one. And then the thing about endometriosis is that it runs in families. So there's usually a mom or an aunt or a granny that can relate to your sort of symptoms. And then the the bowel should ring, you know, and um, that definitely needs to to be sort of addressed by a gynecologist. Um, one can actually um, offer medication nowadays that can really, really help with the flow, um, make it less and less painful, mm. you know. So there's lots of we can do. But the main thing is that, you know, um, is, is, is when something feels wrong, and children sometimes are very shy, you know, they speak up, you know, and if you can't sort of confide in your mother or a sister, then maybe the teacher or a friend at school, um, you know, we must just open platforms so that kids can actually, um, mm. you know, have somebody available to speak to, you know. Let's all wise up and know what we're faced with. Thank you so much, Doctor. We really appreciate your assistance with destigmatizing menstruation. My pleasure. Thanks, Belisa. Cheers. Now, ladies, there you have it. Menstruation doesn't have to be this big idea that you just can't seem to get over. As a mother, sit down with your daughter and let's keep ourselves educated and let's keep those lines of communication open. We definitely do thank Dr. Bassan for all of her information and we do find it critical and key to stay educated and wised up. Head over to social media, Twitter, Instagram or Facebook. Use that hashtag Afternoon Express and let's share your experiences with us.